the black axe. A simple item. An easy item to get, right? Wrong. These are the chunks I have available. My most recent chunk, the east side of the haunted woods, contains feral vampires. The only way for me to get the black axe. Now, you may think that a level 61 NPC with 40 hit points and a max hit of 7 for a 1 in 42 black axe drop wouldn't cause me too many issues. Well, like myself originally, you'd be very, very wrong. Last time on Canafish Chunk, we spent a small amount of time getting some niche best in slots, but we spent the vast majority of our time training agility. We trained from level 1 to 40 at the bridge outside of Nature's Grotto, really channeling our inner swampletics, and then from level 40 to level 71 at the Canafish course. Also, we could traverse the level 71 spiky chain shortcut in the Slayer Tower, something that we have absolutely no need to ever do. Right, I've got a mild feeling that these uh, vampire fellas are going to kind of wreck me a bit, so I'll fill up on food before we go. Um, but hopefully this 1 in 42 black axe doesn't take too long. They've only got 40 hit points, but they do hit 7s in return. Um, so yeah, I think they'll hit me a bit, but hopefully we get it early. Right, so let's unlock the chunk, which is... 14390 I believe cool right there we go so oh dear do they heal really quickly <laughs> okay right we could be in a bit of bother here um, okay so I think what I'm gonna have to do is kind of pick a vampire probably this fella because we're quite near the edge of everything um trap him flinch like flinching there and then bring my mane over here to kill any leeches or whatever that get on me um i think if i flinch here i should be okay and i think he probably won't heal back if he's not hitting me it just depends if his regen rate is really quick or if he's healing off me if that makes sense um so let's see what I thought was going to be a pretty easy grind of a 1 in 42 black axe is proving to be quite tricky so far. Um, so yeah, let's, let's see what we can come up with. Now, the reason this is so tricky is that the vampires heal a lot, especially when hitting you back consistently. So with my current stats and gear, killing a single one is impossible because I can't out-hit the various healing effects. So... With a strong feeling of deja vu from the first episode of this series, we're going to be bringing the main out of retirement to help us. Okay, cool. Right, looks like we've got Diagro now, so we should be safe just standing around. So now I've got to find that vampire that I had before and try and get it trapped over here somehow so that I can just hit it on my uh, chunk account. But <laughs> this is proving difficult. Oh, no, literally cannot get... A vampire to stick over here they just keep walking through me round me all sorts so yeah oh, this is rough I don't know what I'm gonna do despite feral vampires being noticeably weaker than werewolves they are distinctly more difficult to lure trap and kill using an alt for three reasons if you're sensing some level of animosity from me towards the vampires and the haunted wood in general you'd be correct this is one of the worst things i've ever had to do on this game fuck vampires and fuck the haunted wood so the first reason that this is such an arduous little mechanical experiment is that they and every other npc in the swamp unlike the werewolves in canafis are aggressive this poses little problem for the main as it is 126 combat and so the leeches and vampires leave it alone. However, it causes quite the headache for the chunk account as, just like in Canafis, the Haunted Wood is single combat and so Canafis chunk can easily get tagged off the vampire even once it's fully trapped 
by leeches or other vampires. Extremely vexing. However, the spiral of despair we're entering into trying to get this black axe is only just beginning. The second, and far more annoying reason, is that vampires have the most insane wander range of any NPC I have ever seen. Many of you have probably experienced this if you've ever done farm runs to the west of the Active Hunters, where all too often there's an aggressive vampire ready to steal your hardcore Iron Man status. For me, this makes finding a spot to trap a vampire extremely tricky, as there is only a one or two tile range in which an NPC can be trapped outside of its wander range to make it non-aggressive to the chunk account when it's being hit. When this range is a hundred plus tiles away from its spawn point, it's quite tricky to keep track of which vampire you even have on you and which tiles you can and cannot walk on without losing aggression. The vampire losing aggro is particularly annoying as, if it does, it will begin wandering back to its spawn point over a hundred tiles away. Now, you may be saying, just hit it again to get the aggro back, and you'd be right, I could do that. Except this is where reason number three comes in. The spiders, oh the spiders. Seriously, fuck the spiders. There are these little unattackable spider NPCs wandering around everywhere, and if they spot you, they spawn level 71 feral vampires. Now, level 71, if you're paying attention, means that they absolutely are aggressive to my 126 combat main. So, if I lose the aggression of a level 61 vampire that I'm luring, and have a level 71 vampire anywhere near me, then this will get on me. And due to this area being single combat, I need to either kill it, or run away. And either give the level 61 ample time to get back to where it came from. Oh, and they can spawn an unlimited number of these, and completely clog the wood, so if you piss around too much, you're completely overrun, and everything is totally fucked. Anyway, I digress. Eventually, we sorted it out and found a spot that could work. Okay, 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 okay. We've got a spot for a level 61 vampire, which is here. There is le There are leeches wandering around, so they can get on me, but if I stand around here and let everything de-aggro for 10 minutes or so, I should be okay to just kill this one over and over. Um, cool, right, this spot seems to be working. <sighs> You've no idea what relief that is. Um, yeah, this has been really tricky, way, way trickier than, um, than the werewolves, and I think it's going to stay tricky as well, because that can happen over and over. Um, feral vampires are aggressive on my main, um, so it makes it really tricky luring the other vampires over, um, but we seem to be alright for now. 38 attack, hopefully we don't get to 40 before getting the black axe, but it's looking, it, uh, 1 in 42, it sounds like not a lot until you're doing a method like this, which really takes a long time per kill. Um, what can we get? Nothing of interest. Yes! Yes! Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm so happy I got that. Oh my god. There is our best in slot weapon for all the chunks that we've got. A level 10 black axe. I mean, the steel scimitar is obviously better, but this has a higher level requirement, so we had to get it. But oh my god, that was so brutal. Ah. Oh. So at this point, I think it's worth detailing two small changes I've made to the extreme one chunk rule set. One is simple and one requires a little bit of explanation. Both of these rules have been in place since the start of the account. However, in an effort to keep the first two videos clean, I chose not to explain them. I really wasn't expecting them to kind of get the sort of traction that they did. The first rule is not treating raking as a primary training method. Fairly self-explanatory, and a lot of one chunk accounts do this. Secondly, is the secondary training limiter that I've put in place. This is a variable on the chunk picker that can be set to any number that you like. Lots of people, such as Verth, play with this variable unlimited. However, they make exceptions to this where necessary. For example, 
Verve describes in his series that he's no intention of getting 99 smithing to smith a rune 2h despite this being technically possible because grinding skeletons at a 1 in 25 rate for tin and copper just isn't viable and he doesn't want to spend the next seven years doing it. I think we all believe that's fair. I want to formalise this, um, some secondary gathering methods a stupid rule, by setting my variable to 1 in 16. This essentially means that only primary gathering methods or relatively viable secondary gathering methods count. For example, killing blue dragons for Dragonhide would count as a way to train crafting, as even though it's a monster drop, it's dropped at a 1 of 1 rate, less than the 1 in 16 that we set. Training magic via mind runes from the Barrow's Chest would also count, as even though they aren't guaranteed, they're dropped at a 1 in 8 rate, again, under the 1 in 16 threshold that we set. Now, something that wouldn't count would be if an NPC in my chunks had a 1 in 100 drop rate of dropping Molten Glass, and I had an uncut onyx that I needed to cut. It would be too stupid to train to 67 crafting via a 1 in 100 rate of Molten Glass, so our chunk picker would automatically filter this out as a training method. As soon as I then had a real, uh, like a more real crafting method, such as access to a 1 in 6 opal drop or access to mine clay, it would pick this up and put the 67 requirement back in. Um, I hope this makes sense to everyone. Essentially, it's just formalising the meme drop rate and meme training method rules that Verf and Limpwit have described in the past, so that there's no chance we get bogged down in doing something really stupid that either takes years or I have to make further exceptions, right? So I hope that makes sense, and I hope you can get on board with it and not hate me too much. Okay, so we're not about uh, dithering in this series, so let's pick... Whoa, 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 hold your horses, sunshine. You weren't about to watch me pick a chunk without bothering to subscribe to the channel, were you? That would be disgusting behaviour. <laughs> a chunk. The port phasmatis chunk, that is... <laughs> well, the 80 cooking grind has finally caught up with us. But slightly more of an issue in this one in particular is that 87 crafting. Um, it's also picking up 70 attack for some reason, but I think that's just because I've unlocked Slayer because I can get the, what is that NPC called, Tortured Souls now. Um, so that means that I can complete the ghost task that we have. Um, the cast wind strike is picking up because it, it reckons I can get some of the NPCs in the Slayer Tower. So we'll have to see if that is actually possible. I think it's probably the Infernal Mages. Um, but yeah, a range, a bank, a furnace, and the charter ships. So yeah, we're definitely getting 80 cooking. And we're definitely getting 87 crafting. So this is going to be a fucking long chunk. So... It's finally upon us. We have access to a range, which means we need to cook a shark. This isn't the only grind that this chunk unlocks, though. So let's go through what we need to complete to move on. So firstly, the obvious one, 80 cooking. This is to cook the raw shark purchasable from the Canafis raw meat shop. Secondly, we have the 87 crafting requirement for a Dorgishan light bulb. With the charter ships and the furnace in Port Phasmatis, we now have access to a primary crafting method and molten glass, meaning we have to complete the highest skilling challenge possible with the given materials, which is the Dorgishan light bulb. The third challenge in this chunk is Slayer. All the way back in episode one, we got a ghost task from Maschana that we couldn't do. But now we can complete this by killing the tortured souls north of Port Phasmatis. This means that we're going to unlock crawling hands at a minimum and also be able to get another Slayer task. So the Slayer training may not stop there. Either way, definitely an interesting chunk with a lot to do before we can pick another one. So to get into Port Phasmatis, I believe we're going to need Ecto Tokens, which means we need to go and sacrifice some bones to the altar, and we need pots, that's what we need. So let's unlock the chunk, such a huge one to get done. 
Oh, we're going to be here for a long, long, long time. Right, let's go uh, sacrifice these bones. As it turns out, spending 100 hours doing agility was well worth it for this 12-second time save in the Ectophuntus. Uh, we'll probably use that a few times, to be fair. The XP drops are like cracked cocaine. And there are our 40 Ecto tokens, and we can now enter the port. Oh, this is... It's kind of a... It's the start of a new chapter, right? It's quite exciting. Um, let's go have a look around. Um, I don't think there's really too much here other than... Basically the ability to do cooking and the ability to do crafting. Um, there's this general store, which I think is about four times better than the general store we had in Canafis, because Canafis always buys at the minimum, and this shop buys at, I believe, 40%. Uh, doesn't sell anything too interesting. Yeah, not anything too interesting here. I think what we're going to be spending most of our time with is obviously this range, this bank, and the furnace. Um... Um, I think the ghost speak amulet is going to let us speak to the bank directly. Yes, it is. So I guess we should just bank all our stuff and do a round of crafting. I mean, that's what we're going to be spending presumably hundreds of hours doing. Uh, I've not actually done the maths on it yet. But I believe what we just need is to run over here, trade with these chart shop guys. Um, set those left clicks to trade. Uh, grab 50 buckets of sand and 50 soda ash per run, although obviously there's only 10. Um, so yeah, grab that and then what? Run over to the furnace. Jobs are good in. Make the molten glass. Then bank it or drop it on the way back. Either of those might work. Um, but yeah, this is it's, it's weird. You get quite a lot of enjoyment from the simplest of things i've had crafting sat there on level one for so long and now i'm just here able to train it freely and i need to get to level 87 i mean we've got level three from just turning the sand and sand and ash we've got can you hear those seagulls that is just unnecessary um so yeah, level 3 from just creating the Molten Glass, and then level, I mean what, probably going to get level 5 from this, uh, from doing the actual glass blowing. I mean, I'm, uh, what, this looks like I'm getting a lot of levels. I'm going to be praying to get levels that quickly uh, later on into this grind. But I bet that grind from level 86 to 87 is going to feel like it takes a fucking age. But... This is exciting. I mean, I'm able. I basically unlocked two two more skills at, at least um, with the cooking and the crafting, and I need to get high levels in both of them. And to be honest, the training methods for both really aren't that bad. They could be a lot worse. I mean, I've seen a lot of the Lumbridge chunk men. I know start by having to create a lot of like silver bolts and stuff like that for their for their crafting. Um, is that crafting? Maybe that's smithing. I'm not sure. I think it's crafting. Um, I know they basically have to do some really miserable methods, right, to get their crafting high. So actually, charter ships as a method isn't too bad and could be a lot worse. I mean, we're level five already, just in the amount of time that I've been speaking for. So this could be a lot worse. 87 is an insanely high requirement. But once we get that done, we're pretty much going to be fine on crafting. There's not much that I'm going to need crafting for past that. I mean, what at that level we can make glories. We we could boost for an amulet fury at that level. Um, so yeah, once we kind of get this grind out of the way, that'll probably be us done with crafting, and it'll also probably be us done with cooking as well because there's not too much past level eighty. Um, so yeah. Although this is quite a tough chunk, I think it will be a fun one. Now, this is a really important level coming in, level 15 crafting. So what this lets us do is create Snelms, which is going to be by far our best money maker because 
Uh, if you craft a, a, a snail helm and sell it to the shop in Canafis, not Canafis, uh, in Port Pasmatus, you get 120 coins. And in theory, I can get, you know, a, quite a lot of snails per hour, probably 150 or so. So I think I should be able to get kind of in excess of maybe 20k an hour now, now that I can craft the snails and um, sell them here. So yeah, our GP per hour is probably about 10 times what it was when we just had Canafis. Um, so that's pretty cool. And as you can tell, we are pretty much out of GP. So we're gonna need to go make some more before we can really continue on with the, uh, the cooking and the, uh, the crafting. So I bought some uh, meat at the shop. I didn't get too many, only like 1,500 or so, but time to get some initial cooking levels. We're probably going to get them very, very quickly. Um, but, yeah, I, it's, it's exciting to kind of be getting a lot of levels in a chunk, right? Uh, no, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to burn my meat. I want to do that. Um, cool. So hopefully the fail rate on this stop uh, like gets a bit better <laughs> over time. Um, but yeah, we're going to be cooking regular meat uh, and chickens and rat meat and bear meat and whatever all the way to level 80 because these cost one coin from the shop and trout cost 13. So these are a lot better and like it's better to get slower cooking XP than get 13 times more gold, right? Because um, I think level 80 is going to cost me about 70 to 75k in meat and would cost you know nearly 500k in trout so it's going to be faster overall to do it via the level one cooking stuff um so yeah here we go starting the cooking grind i'm about to go upstairs to bed and play on mobile for a bit so if i come back with like loads of cooking levels as the next clip um then that'd be why so last night I spent a whole bunch of time uh, doing some cooking and some crafting. Uh, got level 39 cooking and 30 crafting. And I also got a ton of snelms. So what I'm going to do is go and sell these at the shop. And, uh, well, at the Port Phasmatus shop, not the Canafis one. And uh, see what kind of coinage we can get for them. Um, so yeah. Then I'm probably going to just spend some time buying some food because buying the food at the at the raw meat shop is like the hardest thing I can actually do on mobile. And um, the actual using the fish and training the crafting is relatively easy on mobile. Um, so I want to make sure that I have a nice stock of raw food ahead of any uh, mobile training that I'm going to be doing. So in theory, these should sell for 120 each. I'm probably not going to be selling just one per world though. Um, so it might take, you know, I might not get quite that much for it, but it should still be a very healthy chunk of gold from this. So from the Snelms that we had, we managed to get 30.5k, which might not seem like a lot, but in this chunk is crazy. So with the 6k that I've got in the bank still, I think it's 6k that I've got. Um, yeah, that is actually... 1 million cooking XP banked which seems crazy right uh, but the coin but the beef and chickens and stuff from this shop are 1 GP each and give 30 XP um so they will take a long time to cook to get the uh, 80 cooking that we need but they are at least cheap so even though our our uh, money making methods are terrible uh, the amount of money that we need is also very low so yeah, that's about 73, 74 cooking right there. Very exciting. In terms of the raw GP that we need to complete this chunk, we need approximately 70K for the cooking and approximately 420K for the crafting. So doing snails, we're talking about 25-ish hours of pure getting GP, probably more like 35 hours, just to be able to afford to get 87 crafting and 80 cooking, never mind the time to actually get those levels. So 
yeah, this is rough with the money-making methods we have at the moment. Okay, so I'm quite enjoying doing this uh, method to get the meat. It's really not too bad. I'm getting about three and a bit thousand meat per hour. Um, so we're kind of banking about 90k cooking XP per hour, which really isn't that bad. It's quite intense because I need to hop quite a lot. And the actual cooking itself is obviously going to take quite a long time because you you can only you can't two tick uh, meat and chicken because it brings up a second option which I'm not sure if I've shown you yet. If I haven't, I will. Um, so you can't two tick it, um, but you can only cook about fifteen hundred per hour because of that, um, which limits your actual cooking XP per hour to about forty five k at best probably more like 40k due to the walk between the uh, bank and the range um but yeah actually getting the cooking xp banked isn't too bad um i think I've, i'm at 52 cooking at the minute um i think the last time you saw it it was at 45 i probably am going to be doing quite a lot of the actual cooking off camera because it's so afk in comparison to everything else i have to do in this chunk um, it just lends itself quite well to mobile in a way that basically none of the other stuff do. Buying the meat is quite an ag because I can't hop worlds as easily and I also don't have the screen markers. Um, oh, and you also have to click the like set 50 to be the left click every single time on mobile, which is a bit of an ag as well. Um, and then the crafting is really a ball lake on mobile because you need to drop stuff and not and use stuff on each other so you kind of have to keep putting on and off the uh the left click drop which is which is shit whereas on uh pc you can obviously set each item to be its individual left click which makes it so much easier um and yeah get get, get actually getting the coins from uh killing the snails isn't too bad on mobile either so yeah those are sort of the three main activities we're going to be doing um and yeah, they're not too bad. Well, four main activities, I guess. Buying the food, cooking the food, getting the coins, and doing the crafting. Um, two of them are alright for mobile, two of them aren't. So you're probably going to see a disproportionate amount of buying food clips and doing crafting clips. Um, and not too much of the others. But the progress is not too bad. 52 cooking already. I'm sure this is pretty early on in the video. Um, but yeah, it's a good grind so far. What is not as bad... As you might suspect, it's, it is. I mean, I'm saying that now <laughs> at level 52. I'm sure by the time I'm level 75 plus, I'm going to be uh, hating myself. Um, buying, you know, the best part of 70,000 raw meat is, is a challenge in of itself, right? Um, but at the moment, it's good. Do you know what I'm really fucking appreciating on this grind? 71 agility my run regen is so quick in comparison to the early stages of this account it makes all these grinds so much better so much better because it's just like i've already regen like 10 percent from walking over to the bank to here including hopping it's wild it's gonna just be so like both of these grinds involve a lot of walking and running around so I'd love to know like how much time I actually save from having 71 agility versus if I was level 1 doing this. So I guess I should probably show you the crafting method I'm going to be doing all the way up to level 87 crafting, which is buy the soda ash and the buckets of sand from the shop here. Oh, I do... 10 in the world and then the last one on the way and then I sprint over to here over to the furnace which isn't too far definitely could be worse um, as a scenario so I'm, I'm fairly lucky having a furnace this close to the charter ships make all of the molten glass like so 20 XP per one pretty good um, it felt really nice doing level one crafting making molten glass um, so there is level 32 crafting. We're one level away from being able to make the vials. And then I set my set to walk, walk over this way and craft what I need to craft. And then basically as we get over there, we'll have made all of our all of our things. So we're gonna be making a lot of lantern lenses once we hit level 49, but for the minute we're just making these pieces of shit. Um 
And yeah, so I basically make it all on the way over, back over and then drop it all like so. Buy the one that's regened in the shop in that time and on to the next world. So simple as that. Um, should be probably about, <laughs> this is going to sound like a lot, um, about 130 hours of this uh, to get level 87 crafting. So that does sound like a lot. But bear in mind, that is level 87 crafting. That is like the last level that we're ever going to need, right? Because you can make... I could make a necklace of anguish with that. I mean, not that I'm ever going to have a Zenite shard on this account. But realistically, if I ever managed to somehow bag myself an Onyx, I could make a Fury. Easy. Um, but I guess what's more realistic is that I could make myself a Glory relatively easily, right? Um, as well as things like a combat bracelet, which are going to be best in slots for me. Um, getting the actual, uh, what's it? Getting the actual molds is going to be the hardest part, but it's not too unrealistic that I could, I could get down to Al Karid on this account. Um, but yeah, getting 87 crafting is a high ass level. Um, so really, 130 hours for it, not too bad. Oh, hello. These tortured souls are in this chunk, aren't they? I forgot about that. Right, I'm going to have to leg it, otherwise I'm going to die. But that's my slayer task. Because I've got a ghost slayer task at the minute, so I can do that. Interesting. I'll definitely do that at some point. So we just hit level 60 cooking a while ago. I was on mobile when I did it. Um, but yeah, kind of flying through the cooking at the moment. It's definitely going to be the easiest part of this grind. Um... But yeah, level 60 cooking. Oh, this is cool. I've just decided to go for my first uh, snail trip since I got my cooking up a bit. And I just realised I don't need to buy Slayers or Spikes any uh, Slay uh, what are they called? Moonlight Meads anymore. Because I have 8,700 cooked meat that I can just start tucking into. Even if they only heal three instead of four. Um, but that's nice, never having to buy food again. And here we are coming in with level 65 cooking on just meat and chicken. Do you want to see my, uh, see my stacks right now? Um, they're looking pretty healthy. I've also got quite a lot of raw stuff at the moment, which is nice. Nearly 2,000 of each of them, so that's a few cooking levels right there. But look at our stack of meat, 11,000 meat, 3,800 chickens. Um, you, you haven't seen this much meat since you most recently watched a Johnny Sins video. That is outrageous. And uh, there's plenty more inches. I, 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 mean, I mean cooked meat to go. So one of the interesting things in this chunk is that these tortured souls actually walk into the chunk. So... The interesting thing about these guys is they actually count as ghosts, which if we do the task quick chat is our task from Mazchana. So we should be able to get some Slayer XP here and um, start Slayer properly. And by my reckoning, we're going to get enough Slayer XP from this to unlock Crawling Hands and Banshees. Which is quite interesting because those are some tasks that we can do in the Slayer Tower. So, uh, yeah, with m no further ado, let's see if we can actually kill these guys with a full invent of chickens. Okay, safe to say these things are very killable. So, that's nice. I thought I was worried they were going to absolutely ransack me, seeing as they're 59, uh, 59 combat. But right, let's hop, hop worlds and see if we can find any more. Oh, that's so good. We're going to be getting so many Slayer levels from this. So many. And there is the first Slayer level on the account. Level 2 Slayer. <laughs> this feels so good. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, I forgot to get any Ecto tokens. Back to Caliphate. Level 5 Slayer, which means Crawling Hands. That's a whole ass creature that we've unlocked in the Slayer Tower. So the Slayer Tower is now actually something we can do. Slayer level 10. 
cave crawlers, which are on the complete other side of the map, so I won't be able to get any of those. But making progress, and we should be getting level 15 from this task. 67 cooking, really rattling through it. Oh god, this is it's it's scary to me that this is taking so long. Um what, like barely a quarter of the way through, and we've still got 87 crafting to go, which is gonna be at least three or four times as long. So uh <laughs> yeah, this chunk has been savage so far. To be fair though, at least this bit of the grind, they're just doing the cooking is actually quite afk so it's actually quite manageable and there is level 15 slayer which is the level for banshees and we've still got five ghosts left i'm very excited to see what our uh, our next task is going to be because if i can do it that'd be so cool to actually be actually be doing slayer on, a, on an extreme one chunk account is a very very rare thing um so yeah this is kind of uncharted territory and there is the first slayer task completed level 15 and a bit slayer um so i guess what i need to do now is go and get a new task from maz channel and then after that we're going to be changing the chunk picker so that we've got uh crawling hands and banshees unlocked which is going to result in a couple extra grinds i believe Cool, so let's grab the task. We're hoping for something we can do. So crawling hands in the Slayer Tower or Banshees would be perfect. Um, there are other things I can do like bats. Um, I'm not sure if vampires and werewolves are tasks or not. Uh, but there's a few things that we can do. So if we can get some of those, that would be ideal. Earth Warriors. Okay, I think that might be a long, long way off. But we've still got level 15, uh, which is the Banshees. So let's uh, let's go to the Chunk Picker and, un and, and tell it that we've got 15 Slayer now and see what shakes loose. So in terms of the tasks that were released by getting to level 15 Slayer, we have Obtain a Crawling Hand, which is a 1 in 500 drop rate from a Crawling Hand. Would you believe it? And obtain Mystic Gloves Dark, which is a 1 in 512 drop from Banshees. We also have this uh, easy task here, which is to just kill a Banshee. So that will get ticked off by default. But yeah, we need to get these two collection log items in the Slayer Tower. And then we're done with Slayer again up until we get an Earth Warrior task. Okay, so I've been banking meat for quite a while. Uh, we're currently at, um, let's have a look in the bank what we're at. I, it's a lot of meat that I've got banked. We're at 68 cooking at the moment. Um, and I've banked, let's have a look, uh, what, 7.6 thousand, 10.1 almost 12,000 meat um, to add to our 20,000 that we've cooked already. So that's about halfway to 99. So 12,000 meat, 360k XP. So just shy of 1 million cooking XP banked. But what we're going to do for the time being is we're going to go to Crawling Hands because unbeknownst to me, the gloves that they drop actually can be sold for quite a lot of money. So they drop purple gloves, yellow gloves, red gloves, and teal gloves, all at a 1 in 64, so essentially a 1 in 16 for any of them, that sell for 200 GP to the shop. Um, they also drop emerald rings, sapphire rings, and gold rings, um, which sell for a decent chunk as well, kind of up to 500 for the emerald ring. And we need to go to Crawling Hands anyway, to get ourselves the crawling hand item which is a one in 500 so we should be able to get a decent amount of money from that grind uh, from the gloves and the rings to get us closer to the gp that we need to bank the 80 cooking so let's go and do that and uh hopefully i'll be back to you with either a load of gp or the crawling hand hold up hold up hold up i just got a first emerald ring and I was like, oh, great, 500 GP. But no, not 500 GP. That could be so useful to me in the future, like in the not-so-distant future. So I'm a long, long, long way. Um, oh, there's our first gloves. 
Uh, so I'm a long, long, long way from um, the mould shop down down here, right? I mean, that's a that's a lot of chunks because you've got to sort of path all the way this way and round and in, and you know, even to get there, we've got to get 99 cooking and 99 defence. So we're miles and miles and miles away from going to the to the mould shop down here. But we're not too far from Ferox Enclave, right? I mean, that would be, you know, not that inconceivable to get to. I mean, there's a lot of crazy grinds here with the uh, construction cape. But, you know, if we just happen to start going north um, up into the wilderness, you know, that's not that far away. And that could be a really useful teleport for me. If I can get that enchanted, which is what cosmic runes and air runes, which I don't know if they're anywhere near me or not at the moment, then I could get that enchanted and use that ring and that could be pretty big for me, right? Okay, so I've been here about an hour. I'd say the GP is definitely worse than the snails in terms of just raw GP output. Um, but I also get prayer XP here, getting the bones. Um, the rings will actually be easy and the rings and gloves will actually be easier to sell than the... Um, than the snail shells because they're worth more per one um but yeah it's all right for training actually as well because i can just constantly hit and my natural health regen is enough to keep me at full hit points um so it's not too bad we're 152 kills in um so you know about a third of the way to the crawling hand item that we need um but yeah it's a good it's a good good little training spot really um I'm quite impressed by the amount of GP that's coming out, considering I would have to do this grind anyway. Um, so it's a nice little shortcut to getting some real, to getting the GP that I need for cooking and crafting, right? I mean, I need, I need like 400 odd K for crafting, so that's gonna be a long one. Um, but I only need about 70 K for cooking, so not too bad. Um, but yeah, this is a decent GP, and uh, yeah, having a good time. And we just hit 500 kill count at the Crawling Hands without the Crawling Hand item. So uh, we're going dry, but I'm actually quite enjoying this. Just being able to click on a creature, kill the creature, loot the bones, loot the coins, keep hitting. It's really quite nice, as opposed to having to trap stuff round corners and lure it on mains and just generally have a miserable time. This has been really pleasant. So we just got an uncut diamond, which is not actually on the drop table. It's uh, on the gem drop table. So that means that that drop was a one in 4,000. Uh, a lot rarer than the crawling hand, but here we are at uh, 587 KC at the, mo at the moment. Um, that would be quite a scary requirement in terms of crafting if I didn't have to get 87 crafting in this chunk already. A lot of people have probably got an uncut diamond off the uh, off the drop table of like anything, because the gem drop table is obviously universal. And, and been like, oh no, now I've got to cut it, and oh, that's gonna be so bad, and I can only make pots to craft with or something. Luckily for me, I've got a pretty good primary crafting method and I will be getting far past the, I think it's 43 to cut a diamond, shortly. So, uh, yeah, blessings in disguise. Ooh, there is the crawling hand at just under 600 crawling hands killed. Nice little item to get, totally useless, but our first sort of, I think that might be our first non- random event collection log. Oh no, it's not because I got a mark of grace. Whoops. I've got my daughter with me. So if you hear anyone in the background, that's that's what it is. Uh, we're starting the the arc of yellow is what we're is what we're going with now. Yellow boots, yellow gloves and a yellow cape trying to look a bit snazzier in this uh, hell forsaken wasteland. Big level coming in with four minutes to the update. Level 70 cooking. So we can now make an Admiral Pie if we could get what we need to get them. But uh, just 10 more levels to go until we can cook the eponymous shark. Uh, about one third of the XP done. Really not too bad to be fair this grind. I'm quite enjoying it. So uh, onwards and upwards.
Okay, so we just made a pretty big discovery, which is I don't need loads of cash to do crafting because you can actually turn a profit doing the crafting itself. So if we take the, where is it? The bullseye lantern lenses, which is what we're going to be making for most of our grind. We can sell those to the shop for between 28 and 7 GP each for a total of 195 GP per 12 that we sell, which is about how many we'll make per trip, which is more than the 120 GP that I would be buying the stuff, you know, buying the buckets of sand, buying the soda ash for, which is 10 GP per, or 5 GP per one, so, you know, 120 GP, basically, and selling for 195. So I can actually make a profit doing the glass making. And because of that, and I've got I've got 35k GP at the moment, you don't make any GP getting levels at 33 and 42 because they sell for nothing. The glass orbs actually sell for 40 GP, so more even than, than the lantern lenses, but I'll probably do the lantern lenses for the XP anyway because we're going to be pretty much doubling the amount of money that we spend. So we should end up with almost 500k in profit. <laughs> which is pretty good um so if i do that we can it can be a really efficient way to get it done so basically if i walk to the furnace and back to the docks and drop everything it is going to take 103 hours of crafting roughly if i walk from the ship to the furnace to the shop and back to the ship it will take about 140 hours so it's 37 hours extra to sell to the shop, but we won't have to do any killing snails for shells to turn into snelms to sell for GP. We can just get straight into the crafting. We can generate enough of a profit that we can buy the rest of the meat that we need for 80 cooking. Um, so I think this is actually a vastly superior method. And also because I'm gonna be generating so much GP, I can, you know, towards the end of that grind, stop selling to the shop and go back to the other method uh, of dropping because I'll have built up enough of a buffer that I can do it without running out of money. Um, so we're probably looking at more like 125, 120 hours for doing the crafting rather than 103 plus getting 500k from snails. So I think this is a far better method. We'll zero time get the GP for the cooking as well. So... Yeah, we're going to swap to crafting. I'm going to get up to 46 for the glass orb, and then I'll be showing you guys the new method. So this is our new method. Starting at 30,301 coins, buy the two buckets of sand and the two soda ash in the world that have restocked whilst you've been running over to the furnace and the shop. And then you buy the 10 fresh ones, do a small amount of running over to the furnace, but then start walking. We're then heading over to the furnace to create our molten glass. So this is kind of the most tedious bit of this method is the walking back and forth. So you can see we spent 120 co coins on these 12 molten glass uh, because we started at 30,301. So we make the molten glass here for 20 XP each. As soon as we've got these, what we're going to be doing is walking over to this door, like so, creating the unpowered orbs for 52 and a half crafting XP each. Not too bad, I would say. Um, we head over to the door like this. You can see our run regen is kind of getting sort of back to where it needs to be because we've been doing all this walking. Um, we then wait for them to finish at the door, we then turn our run on, head in, sell those to the shop like so, and start running back. So as you can see, we made 145 GP profit from doing that. We then run back to the charter ship because we have nothing on us, so our weight is at the lowest it's going to be, so the run regen is going down slower. We then start walking again, trade with the charter ships, buy the two that have regened, and hop worlds, and then, well, you saw what happened, start the process again. So a relatively nice method, to be honest, um, that can actually 
kind of net us quite a lot of GP in the long run and also quite a lot of XP. So we're at 46 and a bit at the moment. And I imagine that's going to be shooting up. And with, before long, we're going to have enough GP to finish banking our cooking, which is going to be really nice. Um, so yeah, that's me for the next 125 hours or so. So I've had a long three-day weekend away from the computer, um, but that doesn't mean that I haven't been playing on mobile, and this is the progress we've made so far up to level 60 crafting. And I've developed an even better method. So <laughs> instead of selling it direct to the shop, I realised that if I don't actually care about having loads of GP afterwards, which I don't, I don't need to sell it to the shop every single run. Because these um, are valued at 100, they're 70 GP, they're like 70% threshold, which is a high alc, is 70 GP. Their low alc threshold is 40, which means the bare minimum they can be sold to a shop for is 10 GP, which is exactly what they cost. So I had 40k GP. So assuming I'm happy with 40k GP, I can just never make a loss on these. So if I bank them, that's a lot easier than going all the way to the shop because it's a lot closer to the port, so it brings my time down. I bank them all, and then once I run out of GP, I can go to the shop, quick sell them all for 10 GP each-ish, get my 40k back, and then just do it all again. So that is a lot, lot, lot faster to get XP as well as not having to go back to snails to get additional GP. So this is gonna be the new method and we'll see how long it takes per run. Okay, so we're talking 83 seconds for a round trip, which isn't too bad really, because we can do a bit more running to the, um, to the furnace than we can with the other methods. So yeah, we can run these first percentages down to about 74 75 percent and then walk and that really actually buys us quite a lot of time so we're talking 83 seconds for a round trip of this and not having to get any more coins so we're in a far better spot than we were previously so to demonstrate why the method we've chosen is the best we're going to be drawing on a picture of port phasmatis today so the red line that we're about to use is demonstrating walking from the ship to the furnace and back again. So we would obviously go down here, cross here, down here, around the tree, up into here, get our uh, glass cooked at the furnace and then craft it all the way back like so. So that is method number one and it takes 83 seconds, but we need 420k GP to do it. Option number two is the sell it to the shop method. So what we do is we walk down here, as we do with all the methods, down into the furnace, and then instead of going back the way, we craft the orbs on the way to the shop, around here, into here, sell them in the shop, and then come back this way. This takes about 113 seconds, and we're going to generate about 500k GP in profit. Do we need 500k GP in profit though? I would argue not. And I think probably saving the GP, well, we're not saving the GP, not getting the GP at all would be best. And that is why option three, I believe, is the best. And we're going to be using a pink for this due to Barbie being out this week. We are going down this way like so as we do with all the methods into the furnace craft our glass and uh, well yeah craft our molten glass and then we make our, uh, our orbs on the way to the bank here as you can see a much shorter walk than it is to the shop we can then run with an empty bag all the way back down here and over to here so this is so much better because the run from the bank here down to the charge ship, we actually have a totally empty inventory, which means that we can run a lot further this way and this way than we can with the yellow path or even the red path, because with the red path, we never have a, a, an empty invent. The run from here to here is with a full invent of sand, so we're really heavy, so we use loads of run. Um, so that all means that the pink line here 
actually only takes 83 seconds as well. It's the exact same time as the red line, but we're able to bank our, our uh, we're able to bank our glass, uh, our empty orbs. So because of that, we can then take them all, noted at some point in the future, to this shop here, dump them all for like 10 GP each, make back all of the coins that we spent at the charter ship almost exactly, you know, a couple hundred GP profit each time we do that um, from the first 10 that we sell to the shop. But from doing that, we break entirely even on the GP, so we don't have to go and collect any more GP or generate a profit, but we can do it in exactly the same runtime as the red line. So we've cut down our hours on crafting massively with just a little bit of theory crafting here. Um, so yeah, that is what we're opting for, the pink route here. And in my head, at least for the time being, that's what we're going to be doing all the way to level 87 crafting. There is 62 crafting which is the level for green dragon hide shields, which I'm sure are the... Uh, I can't talk today. <laughs> so we have a relatively big level coming in right now, level 73 cooking, which if you know your uh, XP ratios on RuneScape well, you'll know is exactly halfway to level 80 cooking. Ah. <sighs> This grind is going on a long time. I mean, the XP per hour, I was kind of calculating it at being about 40k per hour when I started doing this grind. That was what I estimated it would be. And it's definitely about 30k. I, the run from the bank to here, even though it's not too bad each time, it really, really adds up over time. Um, so I'm definitely kind of getting more around 30, 32k p per hour. So that 80 cooking grind is, you know, just in terms of doing the cooking is, you know, at least 70 hours. So we've done quite a lot of those hours so far. And uh, next level, I think, is going to be crafting. And there is level 64 crafting, which basically unlocks us nothing. However... I'm nearly out of money, 2.6k left, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you me selling the uh, the orbs or whatever they're called, yeah, unpowered staff orb to the shop and you'll be able to get a kind of good idea of why banking them is so much better than selling them each and every time. I've no idea why I insisted on selling them each and every trip, that was mental, um, but this will be this will be the payoff right here. So we've got our three thousand seven hundred orbs and our twenty six lantern lenses that we made by mistake, and we're gonna set the sell on these to sell fifty for each of them, and we're gonna sell them. And if my calculations are correct, we're gonna end up with sort of just about forty k. So uh, whoops, I'm messing that up. Okay, right, let's go. Look at that. Oh, my GP. So we should end up with just about 40k, which is break even. The value on those should be 10. It is, so we're breaking even on the orbs. Jobs are good. And so selling those 3.7k was, I would say, way faster than getting them sold every single trip. I mean, what would uh, 130 trips over to that... Uh, that shop have taken me an extra time, you know, a lot. So there's our 40k back and means we can go and make basically another 4,000 orbs. So I think actually we're going to call it there at halfway to level 80 cooking and 64 crafting. That's about 10% of the way to level uh, 87, so still a lot to go on the crafting. But this has been actually a very sort of lot of playtime that I've put in. Um, I feel like now that I've got the methods down a bit more, I'll be able to do this a lot better. But um, yeah, I think we'll call it there for the episode. Uh, massive shout out to the channel members, of which there are now an awful lot of them. So uh, at the gold tier, we have Avery Fields, IT Warrior, 
Eddie Mayer, Shocked Thief, Mitchell Nunley, DJ Focus, Grimsley, El Pinin, Grimzoso, Salnexor, Kai, Hunterman, and our newest patron at the Amethyst tier. So he had access, or she, had access to this, well, let's on balance say he, um, had access to this video early. So if you want to get access to the videos early, feel free to uh, become a member at the Amethyst tier. I mean, I wouldn't expect anyone to. It's a, it's a, it's a decent amount of money for a chump like me to get from someone. Um, but thank you to Fontcest. But seriously, if you want to support the channel, it's much appreciated. Thanks again for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you're looking forward to the next one, where, fingers crossed, we'll be getting the 87 crafting and 80 cooking completed.